Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm Curl Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing my very first drawing tablet. This is the VTech Video Painter, and this is a tablet that you could use to draw on your television in the early 1990s. This came out around 1991, and I had it for a couple of years, and it was one of my favorite toys. But then I lost access to it, kind of forgot all about it, and I wasn't reminded of it again until much, much later when I started a YouTube channel and somebody asked me what was my very first digital art tablet. I thought back and I remembered using this thing, and at the time, I thought of this as a toy. I didn't think of it as art or a drawing tablet, and I didn't know that drawing on this would lead to a career in digital art, but in some ways it was the gateway for me to get into digital art, because even though this isn't a proper drawing tablet, and even though I was drawing on a television, I was still making digital art. So this connected to my TV, or I should say it connected to my VCR and then to my TV, if that gives you an idea of how old this thing is. You couldn't save your paintings per se, but you could record them to a VHS tape, which is really not very convenient. And then printing them, I don't know how you would have done that. I guess you could have photographed the TV screen or something, but the print wouldn't have been very good. So what can this thing do? Well, as I mentioned before, it allows you to draw on a TV. It has a battery-free pen, and you use it to move the cursor on the tablet, which moves the cursor on your screen. Then when you want to draw, you press one of these buttons here, which makes a mark. It works kind of like a mouse button would. And then there's a few function buttons over here on the side. I'll go over these a little bit later. Up at the top, you can choose from some different transformation commands and you can add 2D sprites and animated 2D sprites. There's also a set of 12 colors that you can pick from over here on the side. And in addition to drawing on this, you can also play a simple puzzle game. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the pen back in the holder here. It can be kind of easy to lose the pen. That's why there's a little hole here so that you can tie a lanyard to it. There's a convenient handle on the side so you can get a good grip on this and carry it around. Flip it over on the back. There's a little compartment here that holds 6D batteries. Just imagine how fun it would be if your Wacom tablet used a D batteries. You'd have to replace them all the time. But fortunately, you can plug it in with a 12 volt AC adapter as well. It has a video output which will allow you to connect it to a TV. Now, I don't have an old CRT TV from the 90s, so I'm going to be connecting it to my HD TV. So it's not going to look quite as authentic as it would if it were the 90s but it'll give you an idea of how this thing works. I'm not gonna draw on it quite yet, but I will do that at the end of the video. I just wanna talk a little bit more about how I came across this thing. So I was lucky enough to find this on eBay. There were only a couple of them out there, and I got it for relatively cheap. It was about $15. There was only one other person who bid on it, because there's not a lot of people out there who are interested in these, apparently. And then, of course, I had to pay for shipping. It didn't come with any of the original cables, but I was able to find the cables for it very easily. I went on down to the local thrift store and I got myself a $4 used AC adapter. This is a light on 12 volt AC adapter. And I just brought the tablet in with me and I made sure that it worked. When you turn it on, it makes beeping sounds. So that's how I knew that it was working. And then in addition to that, I needed a video cable. So I got this video cable here for 99 cents. It's that little yellow plug that I need, but it often comes paired with the red and white. This is called composite video. And I made sure to get a very long cable because there's a lot of distance between the tablet that you have to hold in your lap and the TV that you're sitting across from. If we compare this to a modern day Wacom tablet, it's not a lot different. There's a drawing area and there's a pen and there's some shortcut buttons over here on the side. Now the software is built into the tablet and it's very, very simple. And this is by no means anywhere as sophisticated as drawing on a Wacom tablet with digital art software but it does a lot of the basics. And at the time it was really cool to be able to draw on a screen with a pen and have it show up on the TV. So now let's move on to what you've all been waiting for. And that is drawing on the VTech Video Painter. I'm gonna plug it into my HD TV. I'll strap on my GoPro and I'll do a little bit of drawing on it. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to connect this to a modern day device, such as an HD TV. Like I mentioned earlier, you need your 12 volt adapter, which we'll plug in here to the DC 12 volt. And then we'll plug in our video cable into video out. And that's all we need for cables. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And what's important is that your TV's input or source is set properly here. So I'm gonna hit source on my TV remote. I'm gonna make sure that that's set to AV rather than HDMI. You can hear all those beeping noises. That's letting you know that the tablet's working. So let's go ahead and start the application. I'll just tap on the screen. I'm 
I'm gonna need to hold this a bit differently. I wanna hold it like this so that I can do this while standing up because I need to be able to hold the marked button in order to be able to mark on the canvas. So right now, when I'm moving my pen here on the surface, that's just moving the cursor. That's like a mouse cursor. If I wanna draw, I have to hold the mark button. Now you can see I can put down some pink. I can change my color by clicking up there on the color well, then I can switch to black. And it's a pretty sophisticated drawing device for the early 90s. And it was nice to be able to draw with a pen rather than with a mouse. I didn't even have a computer at the time, so I didn't even know what it was like to draw on a computer. It wasn't until later that I got Mario Paint for Super Nintendo that I was able to draw with a mouse. Let's try out some different colors. We have our yellow. And you can see that the pixels look a little funky here on this screen because this is a modern screen. It has many, many more pixels and it uses different technology than an old CRT monitor would have used. You could have used a CRT monitor or you could have used a TV from the 90s. And a lot of people had trouble getting this to work on their TV. What we did is we hooked it up through the VCR and then the VCR connected to the TV through coaxial. Now this is starting to hurt my wrist, by the way I have to hold this and hold the mark button, so I'm going to take advantage of the mark lock button and that'll turn the mark on. And now I'll just start drawing wherever I put my pen down, but I have to kind of have a good idea of where that's going to be on the screen. Since I've worked on a tablet a lot, I kind of can tell where to go through hand-eye coordination. So this feels very natural to me. I feel like I'm way more capable using this now than I was when I was nine years old using this. And that's because I've had so much experience drawing on a computer. So we'll try a few other colors here. Here's our, looks like it's supposed to be blue, but it's actually showing up as kind of a violet. So let's try the other one. That's almost more of a blue-green. So interesting color representation here. Now I'm just kind of scribbling just to show you the colors and the basic features, and then I will actually draw something that's more detailed. I'm gonna hold this a bit differently. I'm gonna hold it more like a palette with my hand underneath. Like a, I'll hold it like a pizza, I guess. That's a good way to put it. So right now I've been using the pencil. I can also use the paintbrush. Now at the top of the screen here, there are these little cells correspond to the cells here on the surface of the device. So I could select that second cell. And this just gets a little tricky here. I have to hold down mark. And I have to fill in the areas where I want to fill it like that. So the paintbrush is essentially a paint bucket. Now there can't be any gaps in the line here. So you can see the line is not broken. If there were any breaks, then the flood would go outside of the lines and spill everywhere. Let's go ahead and try the eraser now. I'll go ahead and click the mark button to go ahead and initiate it. Now I can go through and I can erase. And then we can also transform. We can scale things and click mark to initiate that. And then it's going to ask me which scale mode I want. We have two automatic transformations here and then we have a freeform scale. So I'll use that. It's going to want me to select my area. So I can define an area here. Let's say I want to make this area bigger. Click on mark. It's going to select that area and then it says, where do you want to put it? Let's put it over here. We'll mark. And there it goes. It got transformed and moved over to the side. I could select another area, move it over here and paste it larger. Let's try the undo. I'm going to click undo. Doesn't seem to really be helping here. It's not undoing anything. I think it works better for after you've made strokes. So let's try that. I'm gonna make a stroke here. I'm gonna select the pencil. We can also choose a thicker pencil here like this. And let's choose black so we can see that. Now I have a much bolder stroke. And let's do undo. Let's go ahead and clear. And now we have a fresh canvas. I'm going to go ahead and draw a mark here. Now what's a little tricky is the aspect ratio of the drawing area is a little more square, whereas the TV is a little more wide, so it's not exactly easy to draw on here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and duplicate that. We'll do a freeform selection. 
We'll select that area there. We'll, we'll, we can paste it over here. That allows us to move different pieces around. Let's clear that. I'm gonna draw another mark here and we'll look at this other option. And we can use it to select an area like this. And we can take it and we can move it right over here. We can also add 2D sprites. Let's add Frankenstein here, that'll be fun. It's all kinds of fantasy creatures. So one that looks like Slimer. Where's Frankenstein? Let's put him in there. We can go over here. Let's put in another sprite. We'll get this truck. Let's give him a bike. Now he's riding a bike. We can also play animations. Let's undo that. Let's put in Space Shuttle. We'll put that in right there. And let's animate it. Animate. It's not a very good animation, it just blinks. Let's go ahead and clear all that. Let's go back to the drawing tools. Now we can also use our cursor to select things. For example, we can select the line tool. And then if we want to sketch stuff out with lines, we can do that. And of course, we still have to hold the mark button for this to make our little lines here and there. Click and click again to make your shape. So you can actually do some pretty detailed drawing since you have the line tool here. We could fill that in with our paint bucket. And there you go, there's our flood fill. So you have to hold the mark button to continue the fill. That's kind of interesting. You can't just tap it once. So we've filled with our pattern there. Let's go back to the drawing tools. There's also elliptical drawing tools. So the way this works is you mark once to create the center point, and then the diameter is defined by the second point. And there you go. You have your circle radius. It's a little tricky though. Let's try the rectangle tool. It works very much like a modern day rectangle tool. Very easy to use. And then we have some ABCs. Let's try that out. Let's do my initials here. A, R. So the kind of art that you would wanna do here would be more pixel art based. You would be working with a very small resolution and so your artwork is gonna to have to be kind of simplify. You can't very easily draw detailed work, especially if you only have these 12 colors to choose from and only a few brushes. But I'll go ahead and see what I can do. I do want to show you the very last feature on this tablet, which is the game mode before I get to drawing. And this is a tangram puzzle. It basically wants you to take shapes and fit them in to this puzzle here. So I'm going to choose the easy mode here. Basically you want to look through and find the shapes, bring them over and put them in place. So what I did here is I hit the rotate button. Sweet. I had played this earlier and I didn't realize you could rotate it, but then I was also wondering what the rotate button did. And now I know. Yay, and I get rewarded by a weird nail slug fairy thing, awesome. All right, so let's clear out of that. How do we get out of that? Undo, game, click on our pencil tool. Okay, that takes us back to drawing. Okay, so as promised, I'm gonna actually draw something on this now. And what would I draw if I were nine? I'd probably draw a Ninja Turtle, so let's go ahead and give that a try. And this is incredibly difficult to hold in this position, so this is gonna be a little tricky. Uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. If your hand accidentally touches the, the surface while you're drawing, it's going to set it off. So you cannot touch the tablet while you're drawing, which is unfortunate because that's nice to be able to do. And your undo will undo everything, so be careful about that. eyes, 
this is incredibly difficult compared to drawing even with a mouse. And then we'll do a little bandana. Okay, let's see if we can get away with now filling this in with some colors. Let's try the head here. Good. Uh, I filled in some of the bandana, so we'll have to go back and manually correct that, but that's okay. We'll do the eyes. Oops, it did the wrong part, so I'll undo. Oh, it undid all my color. How convenient. <laughs> so, I can do the head again. And then the eyes I'll have to do separately. So, I always liked Raphael the best, so let's go ahead and do the bandana here. Oh, awesome. It did the lines the wrong color. Don't you wish you had one of these rather than a real Wacom tablet? Okay, and it filled the bandana black. Awesome. See if we can get the eyes. Nope. Oh, okay. Awesome. It's getting much better with each time I mess it up. Okay, apparently that's going to be <laughs> black. All right, okay, it's going to be Slash now. It's not going to be Raphael. It's going to be Slash. I might have better luck if I just draw this in at this point. So maybe I'll do that. I got a lot of it filled in. Oh, and it made a nice line for me there. I have to erase that now. It's going to take me longer to erase this line than it did to draw the whole piece of artwork here. Let's see if we can put some teeth in without messing this up too much. I think I'm going to try this pencil tool since it's a bit smaller. Holding this thing is really hurting my wrist on the left side because of how I have to hold down the mark button for everything. Because you could just try to just, you know, just do it without holding down the mark button and you could turn on mark lock. But there's no indicator to see where you are. You don't have that hover feature that you have with a modern day tablet. Hard to get all the pixels there too. But you gotta have pretty good hand-eye coordination to draw on a low resolution screen translated into a high resolution screen. It's like the pixels, they're like quantum pixels. They're not really there. Okay, so I'm gonna need to fix the black line area. Draw that back in for the ah. No color sample either, but I guess that's okay because you only have a couple colors to choose from. Back to the eraser. If I want to be really picky about this, what? I didn't select gray, I selected green. Okay, well, I'm still on the eraser apparently, so that was my bad. You see how competent I am with this. I don't think I was any better when I was nine, so. I'll just do a few more finishing touches here. Now, I will spend a little more time later doing more drawings with this tablet, and hopefully, I'll get a little bit better. So keep an eye out for those on my channel. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this bad boy off now. So there you go, that's a look at my very first drawing tablet, the VTEC Video Painter. Again, this was one of my favorite toys. I'm glad to have one now that I can play with and show off to you. If you enjoyed checking out a little piece of my digital art history, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more digital art videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.